Well, hi there, and welcome at a new episode on TypeScript design patterns. And in this module, we'll be discussing the composite pattern. When we look at the definition, it states that a composite uh, that, compo uh, that it composes objects into three structures to represent part or whole hierarchies. Very important is that the composite lets clients treat individual objects and compositions of objects completely uniformly. So when we look at the UML class diagram, you will notice that we have a single component which has an operation. That's the interface. The operation, so let's, when we think of, for example, the .NET framework where we have web controls, all these web controls and the base class web control have a method called render. So that is the operation. Then we have a single leaf interface which implements the same interface as component. Beside that, we also have a composite interface and the composite interface not only implements component here we see the operation but it also has the option to add children and these children are of type component so the classic example is indeed like i said web controls which contain sub controls child controls that you can render or the html dom elements you have a dom element you can append child to child to that but when you indeed uh, call render on the web controls and asp.net it uh, the parent the composite will make sure that this render method is called on all its children as well so that is the responsibility of the composite the composite needs to call this operation on all its child elements i've created an uh, example in typescript so let's head over to visual studio what we see here i've defined the i menu component and the i menu component has a render method defined then we have an i menu item which extends i menu component and as such also has a render method of course then i've created i menu interface it extends i menu component and as such has the render method but it also has uh, children and these children is an array of i menu components Okay, it is important to not make the mistake to add menu items to the i menu because a menu might have sub menus and sub menus and sub menus. So, when we look at the rest of the implementation, I've created uh, two types of menu items a menu item link, which of course implements i menu item, it has a render method uh, defined and just renders a link. We have a, I menu, uh, we have a menu item image link which also implements the i menu item. When we look at that, we see it also has the render method defined. It not only renders a hyperlink, but it also adds an image to that hyperlink. The last one is the composite, is the menu, which implements i menu, and as such needs a children public property, uh, which is an array of i menu components. When we do render the menu, however, if it has a display name, we render that as a text node, but then we will render it as a unordered list. We for and for each child, we create a new list item, and then we call child render. So whether that child is a, a menu item or a menu, we just don't know, and it doesn't matter as long as they, of course, both implement the i menu component interface. They will have a render method. So um, let's head over to the Windows load event. When we look at that, we have a menu, which implements our menu, a new menu, and we add three menu item links to that menu. Then we add another uh, menu item, but it's not a menu item link, but a menu item image link with contact and an, uh, a nice image. Then we have a submenu. Let's define the interface, by the way i menu there we are which is a new sub menu and the sub menu will also have two children because we're looping through from one to two and we add two children we add those children to the root menu and we then call just call render on the root menu and the root menu in turn will render all its children so the result of that here we are is when we go through our page that indeed of course my change has not been reflected yet but when we go to the page we have a menu the three children here they are one two three we have the image link 
that's this one. We have a sub menu, that's this one, with two sub links, that's correct, and that's our menu. And that is how you use the composite pattern. Our client application just had to call render on the root, and whether that was a single menu item or it's a complete menu with uh, sub menus, it doesn't matter for doesn't matter for our client code. That's the composite pattern.